Hello everyone, welcome, my name is MJ Pestridge, welcome to another P3D video. Uh, today we're talking all about anti-aliasing. Um, I thought I'd do a video talking specifically about anti-aliasing. I've seen a lot of miscommunication in the community about this. Um, I've seen a lot of really weird settings that I don't think people are using anti-aliasing uh, correctly. For instance, texture filtering, I think most people just whack it on antistropic 16 times without realizing like what they're doing, thinking maybe that it's the best thing, um, which it may not be in every case. Um, first off though, disclaimer, I'm not trying to say that my way is the only way or the highway. My way is the way that I personally run my sim and anti-lazing works the same on any PC. It, it is kind of regardless it its function within the simulator is the same for everybody so how i work out which setting i use surely can be applied to anybody but again i'm not trying to say that this is the only way of doing it it really will be up to the user to decide what they think is best but if you are new to p3d or flight simulation or you just don't have any idea on what kind of setting to set then this is basically a little guide for you to be able to help you um, discover maybe what the best settings are, you know, or the settings that work best for you, rather. Anti-lazing is a direct result of your monitor, your display monitor, the resolution that is, you know, built within it. In my case, I've got a 4K monitor resolution. Um, the display resolution that you select in the full screen settings. Also, if you use full screen or windowed mode, and then the texture setting that is applied in the image and texture quality setting. Um, it, combining that with your graphics card interface um, is basically how you set your anti-lazing. If it's set incorrectly, you're going to get jagged lines all over the place. It's going to look like there's crawling ants, shimmering, all sorts of weird artifacts. And it could also bring about scenery problems as well. If you set it correctly, everything's going to look fine. Um, of course, with Windows uh, operating system, a Windows update can actually change the internal function of how the sim is used with the hardware so how your gpu utilizes or sorry how your sim utilizes the gpu and of course the settings within so even with the windows update your anti-lazing could slightly change you know um i don't actually ever change the settings for my anti-lazing um oh sorry actually tell a lie when i do a night flight my anti-lazing settings are completely different than when i do a day flight um, they're the only times that it changes, but flight to flight, the settings pretty much stay as they are. It's really the world settings that I change quite a bit, um, depending on where I'm flying. But the anti-lazing settings are really pretty much all the same. And I'm going to go through each and every one of these and sort of tell you exactly what it does and why it does as well. Um, but we're going to start off in the GPU control panel. Um, so the very first thing I would say, um, this, many of you might say this is pointless, but um, make sure that you've actually got your preference emphasizing set to performance. Um, because even though we don't utilize that option, I use you know my own 3D image settings. There are other things on the graphics card that are tuned to performance or tuned to quality, depending on which one you use that are not available in this menu here. So setting it in the other section first and then tweaking it, for me, I feel is the best practice. Um, also making sure that your adjust desktop size and position is set to the aspect ratio and that you perform scaling on the display. If this has any effect on anti-aliasing, I would say it does because the display versus the textures is exactly how anti-aliasing is worked out. Um, and so if this is incorrectly set, you're going to have problems in your anti-lazing. Um, also, the resolution, making sure that you choose your native resolution to your graphics card. If you underperform or if you overperform what your graphics card is natively set to, then it's going to change the anti-lazing again. Um, I have a 4K monitor, so I use the full output dynamic range. If you ha don't have a HDR monitor, I would set this to limited 
again, that could also affect your anti-lazing. Um, I use a 60 hertz refresh rate. I could, if I wanted to, choose 30, but I have other effects in other games which really hamper that. So I set it to 60 and then choose the half refresh rate option in the 3D settings for prepared. So that's nothing to do with anti-lazing though. So what is to do with anti-lazing, right? Texture filtering. Um, if you set texture filtering to high quality, I see a lot of people choosing performance or quality. If you do, your GPU is having to work harder than it is if you select high quality. Because what high quality does is it actually turns off any texture adjustments that are being made um, in the sim. It just turns them off. So your GPU now is free for other tasks. Um, basically, you're stating that you want all the anti-lazing to be done in the sim and not by your GPU. Basically, the reason is, is because P3D is a legacy software. I mean, my, most of you might think, well, no, it's actually quite current. It's 64-bit. They're updating it all the time, so it must be current. Well, it's not actually. It's still actually a 32-bit program at its core, wrapped in a 64-bit shell. Um, so it behaves like a 64-bit program, but it essentially it still is a 32-bit. It's still the core sim for FSX, just kind of tweaked over the years so it for me it's a legacy software product and legacy software products do not really get utilized as best by current hardware um, you, you really have to kind of use almost like legacy hardware in order to get the best out of legacy software so my graphics card is the 1080 ti um, i probably would not rush to get a 30 series card because um, the 1080 Ti probably benefits more the P3D sim than the 30 series, um, whereas the 30 series is more beneficial for you know current gaming or current software. Um, but also the uh, what happens to the textures, you know, if you select high quality less happens it removes all the filtering done by the gpu and it's the same with the anti-aliasing i turn off any anti-aliasing setting except for gamma correction um, in the gpu i don't want my gpu messing with the anti-aliasing i want the sim to do all that work rather than the gpu doing it because the gpu would do it differently you know because it's more it's a modern you know, driver, it's a modern GPU. It, it would have a different way of going about it, whereas the SIM has the way that it's intended to go about it. Um, so I set high quality, that turns off all filtering. If you set to performance, there's gonna be filtering done by your GPU, which depending on your driver could have side effects in your SIM, mostly probably the reason why a lot of people have problems with their scenery, you know, with shimmering or weird things happening on the horizon is because they're allowing their GPU to actually do something in their SIM. So I turn all that off. Trilinear um, is turned off. Texture filtering, antistropic is turned off. I don't want my GPU touching my sim um, i do have the negative lod bias set to allow i find that that actually works better than clamp which is kind of against what other people would recommend but um, this is what i found to be best shader cache i do turn on only turn this on if you have say 60 gig worth of free hard drive space um the other settings for anti-aliasing here are all turned off except for gamma correction. I leave that turned on and that basically is it for your GPU. Um, I don't want my GPU touching the textures for my SIM. I want my SIM doing that. So what's the next step? Right, well, the next step is working out what resolution monitor you have. As you saw in the GPU control panel, I have a 3840 by 2160. So that's the that's the one I should actually be selecting here. 3840 by 2160. Um, I should select that as my resolution, really, um, instead of the one that I do select, which is 2560 by 1440. The reason though I select this is because I find that I have better performance on my GPU card than I do with 3840. I really don't think the 1080 Ti is built for 4K 
performance. Like it does display 4K, it has no problem displaying 4K, but to run 4K in the P3D sim is very different than displaying 4K in say another game or uh, using a film, you know, it, 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 it runs slightly differently. And I find that I actually get a decrease in performance when I go full 4K. So I lower my base resolution to 1440 for a little bit of a performance boost, meaning I can then increase my world settings as well. Um, so basically your, your texturing, your anti-lasing needs to be set in direct relation to your monitor and the resolution that it can achieve or what monitor resolution you've selected here. So I've selected 1440, which means my texture resolution needs to match that number as closely as possible. So for instance, if you're on a 1080p display, you would choose the medium textures. If you choose ultra or high on a 1080p display, you're not going to see any beneficial benefit to the textures because your display physically can't show you that difference. You cannot see 4K textures on a 1080p display, okay? What it will do is it will mean you have to actually pump up your anti-lazing to get rid of those jaggy lines. And this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. They go, I wanna see it in its best, so I'm gonna choose the 4K textures. Well, you're increasing your virtual memory in your GPU unnecessarily and your it means you have to ramp up your texture filtering even higher to compensate for those jaggy lines because the difference between the texture resolution and your display resolution is quite far now if you're on a 1080p machine so if you're on a 1080p machine it's the medium 1024 textures that you need to select and your vram will be managed quite moderately and you won't need as much AA. Um, if you've got a 4K display like me, um, you can then choose the 4K textures. If your GPU can actually really run 4K very well, then choose the 4K resolution here. You can actually turn off your anti-lazing because your texture resolution perfectly matches your display, which means there's no anti-lazing necessary, okay? Anti-lazing, again, works the same in both video and in a simulator or any any application, really. It, it all works the same. It's meant to smooth over the lines of difference between what is being displayed and what the display can achieve, okay? It works the same in any type of game, simulator, video, whatever, going back as far as laser discs, okay? Um, so the, the more you move away from your texture resolution to your display resolution, the more anti-lazing you need to apply. Okay. So those streamers that you see, those people that you see going, Hey, you gotta pump it up to 16. You gotta have the highest set in here. They're just talking out their rear end. They clearly don't have a clue what they're doing. Um, and I'm sorry, but you know, I don't want you to unnecessarily pump your hardware more than you need to. At the end of the day, anti-lazing takes a lot of performance from the PC. It takes a lot of effort for your GPU or your the hardware on your PC to perform the render, okay, uh, for the textures. Um, the less AA you can use, the better your sim will perform. I turn off FXAA, I seriously don't see any visual benefit or performance benefit for turning it on. I'm not saying it doesn't work, I'm sure it does, but there's no increase or decrease of performance by having it turned on and there's no visual benefit that I can see, so there's no point in using it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? So because I use the high textures here of 2048 and my resolution is 1440, you know, I mean, I could use medium as well if I wanted to, because that is quite close to 1440, but 2048 is probably maybe a little bit closer. I don't know. Um, I personally choose 2048 though, but that for me, because my, my, my number is actually in between these two. They really could do with having another setting here um, for like just 15, 1500, but they haven't. So, um, 
I'm I select 2048, which means I do need to apply some anti-aliasing. Otherwise, things are going to get jaggy. I'm going to have weird things. Now, another factor that you need to take into consideration here when selecting your AA is the level of detail radius. Okay, this level of detail radius is basically a circle around your aircraft. The closer you have the circle to your aircraft, the the more detail you're going to see closer to your aircraft. The further away you have this set, the more detail you're going to see out to the horizon. So if you've got your uh, level of detail radius set somewhere, say like on the high setting, and off to the distance you can actually see weird jagginess, well, it's because your level of detail radius isn't set high enough to reach out to that far. So if you set it to max, that will be basically to the horizon, okay? You basically, anything that this sim is performing will go out to the horizon. For me, I'm, you know, I don't really need to see out to the horizon perfectly because my concentration is inside the flight deck. So I set mine to high, um, or was it ultra before? I think it was high. Um, I set mine to high and therefore I don't really see a massive amount of difference because I don't go outside my aircraft a lot. I don't go zooming around like the airports or whatever um, because this level of detail radius is linked to your avatar, which is your airplane, not the camera position that you fly around the airport in. So if you suddenly, you know, skew out of your, your plane and go for a little walk and go for a travel, that is not your avatar then you're moving outside of this level of detail radius. And if you notice inconsistencies in the um, the landscape, that's normal because your avatar hasn't gotten to that point yet. You've done it sort of cheatingly using Chase Plane's showcase camera or whatever it's called, you know. Um, then you will find anomalies and that is perfectly fine. It's when your plane gets there, that's when you, you know, will see the difference. Um, so yeah, the, the further away the texture resolution is, the more anti-lazing you need to apply. Everyone's is going to be different. I would say start with the lowest and then start increasing from there. But when you do make a change, you do need to restart your PC. Otherwise, restart your simulator, sorry. Um, otherwise, it won't show if you just do it on the fly. Okay, you need to restart your sim for the changes to take effect. Because when you start your sim up, just to get to the splash screen, Files are being written. Entries are being created based on what your CFG files say. And if you do it on the fly, they don't get rewritten on the fly. They get rewritten when you next load up. So reload your sim and you'll see the difference. Um, if you tick dynamic texture streaming, you're most likely going to see a major d difference in when you set this yourself. Because by ticking this box, you're actually asking the sim to decide what's best for you in the settings. You're actually asking the sim to go, right, you decide what my best texture resolution will be and the AA, and it will sort of dynamically change it on the fly. So probably best, if you're really particular about what you want to see, probably best to leave this unticked. If you have a potato PC, or if you have a card, GPU card, that is sort of less than the 1080 Ti, then I would tick this box definitely and you will see a better improvement of performance in your sim. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you. I don't want it to make it too long, but um, basically anti-aliasing, you know, there is a science behind it, and it's not just choose the highest settings and it'll look awesome because you're actually going to be decreasing your performance unnecessarily. You know, you're going to be increasing your VRAM unnecessarily and probably getting a crash desktop more easily. Anyway. Thanks for watching. If there's any other video you want me to talk about, if there's anything you want me to talk about with the P3D sim, then let me know and I'll do a whole video around that single topic. Thank you for subscribing. It really does help me with um, motivation or support for the channel. It really does support me. And I do thank you for that clicking that button as well as smashing that like button. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.